Tomorrow in Las Vegas, the man who was arrested for the murder of Tupac Shakur will be in court. A central figure in the reopening of the case is filmmaker Mike Dorsey. He investigated the case for the past decade and released a headline-making documentary. And Mike is joining us today live in studio. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Big week. Yes, huge yeah. week. Um, so you've expressed your frustration over the years about why this case took so long to close. Uh, it's still not closed yet, but why it took so long for an arrest to be made. What is the answer? Why did it take so long? I think the answer is um, when Keefe D was the person who was arrested on Friday, when he originally confessed back in 2008, it was a proffer deal where he had limited immunity. They couldn't use that statement against him. What then happened, though, was in 2018, he started going public and doing interviews on television and on YouTube where he was talking openly about his alleged involvement. Mm -hmm. And I think what took a while was that maybe detectives didn't want to build a case that was only based on his statements. They needed to build a they needed to bring other witnesses in and look at other evidence and really build a case around him so that he couldn't say, oh, well, I was just making it up. Well, that's, you know, I look at the Bill Cosby case, right, where mm -hmm. he made a bunch of incriminating statements about himself. He was told that there was a proffer deal that they couldn't be used against them, and then that conviction ultimately didn't stand. So I, it makes you wonder, mm -hmm. did he talk because he felt that he had immunity, that he was led to sure. believe he had immunity? I don't think he did. Um, first of all, he's not new to this, to the criminal world, um, and he had a lawyer with him when he did his first public interview with BET and I was there and I know he was being very careful about how he was wording what he said mm -hmm. and in subsequent YouTube interviews there were times when they would ask him a question he'd be like I can't say that you're gonna put me in jail or something to that effect so I think he knew he needed to be careful I think he thought he could walk the tightrope between I'm gonna say enough that I get the credit but not too much that I get arrested so you think it was about like street cred and that's why he talked? I mean, what was the change? That's my speculation. You know, my movie Murder Rap came out in 2015. That's telling his story. He's not telling it. Unsolved scripted adaptation of it comes out on Netflix a few years later. Again, someone else is an actor is playing him on a TV show. He's not getting to tell that story. My speculation is he wanted to tell, I'm going to tell my story my way and get the recognition. And of course, the, the murders of Tupac and Biggie elevated this whole East Coast, West Coast violence feud. Um, was that all for naught if it turns out that it was someone from L.A.? No, I mean, you know, he made some statements that maybe um, implicated some of the people from the New York side of that rivalry. Um, and at the end of the day, it was, a, it was a gang rivalry between the bloods that were around Tupac and these Crips mm -hmm. um, at the MGM Grand that night that the murder happened. So there's some tie-in with the rivalry, but at the end of the day, I think it was more about the gang. And, and what does it mean for the Biggie Smalls case, which is also still unsolved? I don't think it helps solve the Biggie case, but I do think it draws the public attention to, okay, wait a minute, if they could solve Tupac, can we now solve the Biggie case, you know, that happened six months later? Um, I, I don't think the Tupac case helps them solve that, but I do think that the, the two cases are definitely connected. Uh, I believe Biggie was killed in revenge for Tupac, so, yeah. Um, and I know you've been speaking with the lead detective. You've been intimately involved in this case for many sure. years. What was that call like? Um, I, uh, I finally texted him this morning. I hadn't been in touch with him since the grand jury convened, um, and I just congratulated him. Um, he also retired. As mm -hmm. this, this is like his last case, and um, he's a very humble person, and of course he credits a lot of people around him for making this case happen. So, well, I, I know a lot of people have been waiting for justice in both of these cases. So, sure. uh, we appreciate your insight, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, absolutely, thank you, Jamie. Bay, thank you for that fascinating.